Hello, everyone. I'm Chu Zhang from a Department of Genetic Medical and Molecular Genetics of uh, Indiana University School of Medicine. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce our recent work entitled A Graph Neural Network Model to Estimate Cell-Wise Metabolic Flux Using Single-Cell RNA-seq Data at RECOM 2025 as a highlighted work. Uh, so alternate metabolic, uh, alternate metabolism happens in almost all human diseases and also the normal human development. And knowing the metabolic changes in human disease can offer the kind of the new understanding of the underlying biomedical and the metabolic stress in human disease. And uh, also enable us to identify new drug targets to target altered metabolism and also discovery of new biomarkers uh, for early diagnosis or disease monitoring of disease progression, such as especially for the low invasiveness, low invasiveness approaches, such as the, uh, for blood-based measures, and also even for uh, personal variable sensors. And also we can provide diet and new nutrition recommendations for, for patients of different diseases. So in this study, so we developed a method named single cell flux estimation analysis, in short is SCFEA, so which estimate metabolic flux of each individual cells by using single cell RNA sequencing data. The motivation of this study is that, so we found that the metabolic, there is a strong metabolic heterogeneity and, uh, uh, in the you know, complex disease tissue as shown in this uh, uh, spatial transatomic data. So the lactate metabolic rate and uh, uh, glycolysis rate show strong heterogeneity in different cells in the, over the spatial uh, distribution. And also, so, and also the metabolic interplay between cells highly impacted disease pr progression. So it's important to estimate the kind of or enable our modeling, computational model of metabolic flux uh, from the tissue level to single cell resolution. So, and to develop such a capability, the challenge arises from the uh, arise from multiple kind of uh, aspect. So, first is the enzyme substrates and the kinetic parameters are highly dynamic, but which determines the metabolic metabolism or metabolic rate, but are largely unknown. Second is the metabolic network is of high complexity, which means uh, uh, simple or classic uh, pathway enrichment approaches cannot offer kind of accurate estimation of metabolic changes. And the last one is the intrinsic, intrinsic nonlinear relationship between gene expression level and the reaction rate need to be specifically handled. The key contribution of this work in, first is that uh, to the best of our knowledge, SCFEA is the first and the only method to quantify relative metabolic flux in individual cell resolution. So to enable this capability, we develop a new optimization strategy to solve mass carrying flux over a complex network, which we consider as a relatively as a relatively hard mathematical question. And also we develop a downstream analysis of metabolic stress, metabolic states, and the identification of key enzymes that may affect the metabolic the, 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 the key metabolic changes. So I would like to start with the uh, computational hypothesis and the problem formulation. So first we consider the human metabolic network is of too high, comp can, the complexity is too high. So we want to reduce it to enable an effective model. And we consider so the, the network can be reduced in, into numbers of connected modules, which means uh, kind of linked reactions can be merged into module, a module, metabolic module, without, the loss, lo without losing the major uh, uh, topological property. And the second is a metabolic network can be reconstructed into a factor graph in which each module is considered as a variable and each intermediate metabolite can be considered as a, a factor. So, and uh, also the key contribute computational hypothesis is includes the uh, forces of flux balance con con consideration. So, but unlike the stringent flux balance condition used in flux balance analysis, here we consider the predicted metabolic flux fluxome should minimize the imbalance of the in and out flux of all intermediate substrates through all the cells, which means we, we want, we hope the metabolic the flux balance can be uh, kind of maximized at the tissue level. 
And second is the nonlinearity. We hope the kind of predicted metabolic flux be nonlinear. This is a straightforward. And uh, also we consider, so since we, we can, our consideration is to merge some uh, certain reactions into a module. So, and we have, we consider that the reaction rate can be written as a nonlinear function of the genes involved in this module and this adjacent reactions. So our idea is to use a neural, neural network that the, to to model the of just a neural network of the genes involved in adjacent reactions to model the metabolic flux of a module, each more metabolic module, and also the here we want to note that the large number of cell samples in single cell RNA seq data enables the kind of the identifiability of the parameters or statistical rationale to predict these these parameters without uh, overfitting. So the first step, uh, so here I want to show, then I want to show the, go through the or the oral framework, uh, detailed framework of SFEA. The first part is the network risk construction. So start from a complex human metabolic app. So we use the uh, network topology and the uh, sub network uh, defined by users and also the gene expression status to reduce re reduce the complexity of the network and reconstruct them into a factor graph like as shown here. So the basic rules of the network reduction and reconstruction, including first for the chain-like reactions, we just simply merge them into one module. This just under the uh, straightforwardly under the flux balance condition, this merge will not affect the kind of the flux of the chain like reaction without any branch and with only one input and one output. And then we manually pick certain number of uh, complex loops or feed forward loops that add merge them into a uh, one com pseudo compound. And we consider this is a uh, and this may further uh, kind of reduce the complexity. And our, our the rationale here is that we, based on our biological understanding, those modules are more like the, those merged uh, loops are more like kind of a buffering system, which won't affect the kind of the flux distribution under flux balance condition. And at last, for the kind of cross-like reactions, so this we consider as non-reducible reactions. Based on this approach, currently we reduce the human metabolic network. We first we collect the whole, whole human metabolic network from the different resources, including CAIC and the human transporter database, and also the. Uh, uh, literatures and we collect including glycolysis and the central metabolism, amino acid metabolism, fatty acid metabolism and biosynthesis, and also the large molecule, uh, large large molecule biosynthesis pathways that we think are may, co may cover almost all of the human metabolic map. And uh, in total, we have reconstructed into a linked uh, map of consists of 169 modules. And here's we can you can check the details in our paper. So, and after we get this uh, uh, network uh, reconstructed, and for any single cell input single cell RNA data, so the uh, the flux estimation is uh, conducted by solving this uh, flux this this loss or this uh, self constrained model. So in detail, first we want to we consider for each module, the each cell is a, can be written as a neural network of the genes involved in this module. And second, we hope the flux the balance condition can be reached. That means we want to minimize the flux balance of the for each intermediate uh, metabolite. Also add the non-negative loss and also the consist the loss of the inconsistency between gene expression and the predicted uh, uh, flux. I will I will tell the talk the detail about this later and also. So we add the scale. So here is the detailed loss function. So the first for a module composed of a certain number of genes. So the modules, the flux rate is written as a neural network of the uh, of those genes. And uh, we hope the flux balance loss can be first uh, minimized. And also the non negative loss is straightforward. And also we, we note that, so in our testing of the highly sparse data, we found that adding uh, this loss may increase the kind of the performance, which is controls the, the correlation kind of uh, the, we want to keep a relatively high correlation between the predictive flux and the total expression level of the genes in this module, in each module. And the last one is uh, we know that 
here this model is uh, the first three terms is a self-constrained model, which means you have a trivial solution. If I add, uh, just uh, simply add, make set flux equal to zero, it will get uh, minimized. So we add a scale, scale of the, the flux, total flux scale to this model, which is the total expression level of the metabolic genes. And here alpha, beta, and gamma are hyperparameters. And this is how the loss changes will converge in your real data, your, your real world data application. So here is the, the <coughs> a toy model for more model details of our, our, our analysis. So here each R is one reaction and each C is a compound, which is a factor. And uh, to, and here we can, and here each R is a R2, for example, R2 is a neural network of this third gene inputs. And to model this, notice this is self-constrained model and to solve this is kind of, we, miss, we may have to develop certain tricks. So just consider if we, each time we update the reaction, what will happen is that it will can never can very hard to get into the global minimum, global minimum as the kind of uh, the this part will be so kind of uh, if we want to effectively minimize the loss, the loss is on the C rather than than, than R. So we we have to kind of uh, uh, perturb each compound which means they are adjacent reactions together rather than perturbing one. So however, if you do this perturbation, what will happen is, is that it will further affect the kind of its help one neighbors. So to solve this issue, so we develop a solution from the perspective of belief propagation. So when we perturb each compound, the, the flux balance of each compound, we will, not, we will, we will also kind of uh, Changes the effect, uh, changes the hop one neighbors and add a certain weight to the hop the loss of the hop one neighbors. And, and this weight is uh, computed by the loss, the total loss of its hop two neighbors for the hop two neighbors, which means if the hop two neighbor of this hop one neighbor is more balanced, of the flux balance is more reached, we are less likely to perturb this. In, uh, on the, uh, and on the other side, we were more likely to perturb it if the kind of the loss is uh, the, the loss of the hop two neighbor is high. So with this approach, we can effectively solve the, this model. And uh, after we get the neural network trend, uh, with, with, uh, after we solve this uh, uh, self-controlled model, we have all the parameter of the neural network trend and we can predict the flux of all the cells. And then with a flux, cell-wise metabolic flux predicted, it enables the downstream analysis, including metabolic stress analysis, which means we can compute which metabolites are more accumulated or depleted. And also it enables the metabolic states analysis to identify the group of cells, with group of, uh, uh, with regions of metabolic map being altered. And also we can compute which genes contribute most to the which re each reaction. And to validate our model, we generate a uh, match the single cell RNA seq data with metabolomic data, <laughs> with matched uh, tissue level metabolomic data. And uh, this data contains the multiple conditions of uh, perturbed oxygen level and perturbed ox oxidative stress level. And we found that uh, our predicted uh, metabolic changes is highly matched the observed metabolomic data, observed metabolic changes. How are you using key genes or single cell or single sample GS gene set enrichment or similar enrichment techniques? We cannot effectively get this pretty high correlation. So, and also we, valid, we also added our method on additional matched single cell RNA-seq and the metabolic data from public domain, but there is a relatively limited data set. And also we conduct the simulated data to test the robustness of our analysis. And also on the real world data, we conduct certain perturbation analysis to test if our underlying hypothesis, like the intrinsic nonlinear dependency, align the metabolic path, metabolic network, and the flux balance condition, whether this is, a, this is this stance. So, and we have confirmed this. So we also, and in the application level, on the application level, we applied it to cancer data and successfully identified the kind of the cell type specific uh, metabolic variations. And also with which are kind of our analysis is consistent with some recently published works, including one work public found identified the cancer associated macrophage have similar metabolic rate as cancer cells. And we identified this is a true case in some cancer type. And also we applied it to the single nuclear sequencing data and found that uh, some metabolites are 
kind of we can predict the like uh, metabolites show significant uh, accumulation or deplete, depletion in Alzheimer's disease, and which are also consistent with uh, reported literature, and also we identify some new possible targets, and also we demonstrate our method can be applied to spatial transcriptome data, and also we applied it with demonstrated it can be applied to like small systems like uh, iron ion metabolism and uh, also on the tissue data with large sample size such as TCGA data which can really generate uh, kind of a meaningful results and here this is uh, the current availability on the github link on the github of SFEA so it with the uh, functions of uh, full functions and downstream analysis and our summarized the pathways and also the predicted flux on the, our validation data sets. So here's the, su the summary here of us is that SFV estimates cell wise metabolic flux rate by using single cell RNA sequence data, but it can also be extended to spatial transformed data and large scale tissue data. And SFV is empowered by a novel problem formulation, a new structure of graph neural network, and a novel solution of flux on network. And we validated the method on. Uh, by generating a matched single cell and tissue metabolomic data. And uh, it's our SLV and this downstream analysis enables uh, comprehensive characterization of cell group specific metabolic changes and heterogeneity in tissue. And we are actively conducting kind of ongoing research to refine and improve this method. Here is the acknowledgement. I want to thank Dr. Sha Cao, Xiong Bin Lu, Melissa Fischel, Yun Long Liu, Huang Kun Huang, and Andy Sikin from IUSM, and my uh, Dr. Ying Xu from UG, University of Georgia, and Dr. Wen Zhuo Wu from Purdue University, and including the PhD students contributed to this work. So here is the full paper and uh, software availability, and this is a contact person of this work. <laughs>